Retailing includes all transactions in which buyers are the ultimate consumer and intend to use the products for personal, family, or household purposes. Uh, retailing is vital to the economy. It uh, contributes to over $1.1 trillion in gross domestic product. A retailer is an organization that purchases products for the purpose of reselling them to ultimate consumers. A retailer can aid in creating value for customers through convenience and shopping, providing free deliveries and multiple shopping mediums, uh, and price comparisons with competitors. Uh, retailer channels. Many retailers now engage in multi-channel retailing by employing multiple distribution channels. These channels are brick and mortar stores, websites, catalogs, uh, and apps. Consumers can research products, uh, read other buyers' reviews, and make actual purchases. International retailing. Expanding global markets and rising middle classes have created opportunities for retailers to enter new market climates. Large corporations have begun entering or expanding operations in foreign countries, and foreign corporations have also begun expanding their efforts on U.S. soil. Online retailing. A significant factor in the rise of multi-channel retailing is online retailing, which makes products available to buyers through internet connections. Online retailing generates $2.3 to $4.6 trillion globally every year. Expectations in online retailing. Customers increasingly expect to have multiple channels for shopping for and comparing products. Many retailers have options for online shopping and may offer exclusive deals and services only available to online shoppers. Retailers are changing. Stores that historically made sales through catalogs have been increasingly converting to online shopping formats. This has allowed them to provide slower moving or out of season goods for consumers who still need them without taking up valuable shelf space. Brick and mortar retailing, also known as your offline retailing, consists of an evolving consumer demographic and preferences that are spurring retailers to adapt in many ways. Most shoppers research products online, then head to the nearest store to purchase them, which is a process called web grooming. There is no clear line between brick and mortar stores and the store's website and its app. Uh, they move back and forth depending on their circumstances and desires. Uh, a good example of that would be Amazon. General Merchandise Retailers is a retail establishment that offers a variety of product lines that are stocked in considerable depth. The types of product offerings mixes of customer services uh, and operating styles of retailers in this category vary considerably. Retailers would be like a department store, uh, which is a large organization offering a wide product mix and organized into separate departments. Good examples are Macy's, Kohl's, and JCPenney. Discount stores, which are usually of self-service. General merchandise store offering brand name and private brand products at low prices. Walmart and Target would be good examples for that. Convenience store, um, usually small self-service stores as well, offering narrow product assortment in convenient locations. 7-Eleven, uh, we usually have a Wawa back in Jersey. A supermarket are quite common too. Self-service stores offering a complete line of food products and some non-food products. Some of those around here would probably be Kroger, Aldi, Safeway. We also have super stores, which are giant outlet offerings, uh, all food and non-food products. Uh, found in supermarkets as well as most routinely purchased products, Walmart super centers, and your uh, super targets. Next is the warehouse club. Uh, those are usually large scale, uh, members only establishments combining cash and carry wholesaling with discount retailing, Sam's Club or Costco for those. Warehouse showroom retailer, uh, which is usually a facility in a large low cost building with large on premise inventories and minimal service. Uh, Ikea is a good example for that. Specialty retailers um, are a little different than general merchandise retailers. They usually emphasize a narrow and deep assortment of products compared to the general merchandise retailers, which are very broad. Uh, despite their name, specialty retailers do not sell specialty items. Uh, instead, they offer substantial assortments and few product lines. Traditional Specialty retailers will be stores that carry a narrow product mix with deep product lines, uh, sometimes called limited line retailers, and may be referred to as single line retailers, if they carry unusual depth in one product category. Uh, they commonly sell such products as apparel, jewelry, sporting goods, fabrics, computers, and pet supplies. A good example would be the Northern Scales Reptiles that opened in Mount Marquette just recently. Next, we would have our category killers which are a very large specialty store that concentrates on a major product category, 
and competes on the basis of low prices and product availability. Uh, good examples of those would be a Home Depot or Best Buy. Our off-price retailers would be stores that buy manufacturers second overruns, returns, and off-season merchandise for resale to consumers at deep discounts. Uh, those would be our Ross, our Marshalls, our TJ Maxx, examples like that. Now we have strategic issues in retailing. One of our issues are store location. Store location focuses on demographic, lifestyle, and purchasing power. It targets customers' preferences and maximizes um, profitability. Next, we have franchising. Franchising includes business making plans and creating goals for themselves. Retail technology, this is including digital software platforms and innovations to allow retailers to manage and control their store. Retail positioning, identifying an unserved or underserved market segment and plus lowest possible prices and at least amount of service values for fashion for career apparel. Store image. Store image is to attract their target market and provide an atmospheric to appeal their emotions and to encourage customers to buy. Category management is understanding the spending patterns, analyzing suppliers, and watching market trends to improve efficiency and effectiveness. So direct selling is one of the most expensive forms of marketing. Uh, it's also one of the most effective. It involves the hiring of knowledgeable salespeople who sell directly to a targeted consumer. The wholesaling is basically just a type of transaction that's between um, a wholesaler and then either a retailer, someone who's going to use those products um, to make their own products, or uh, people who are going to use those products for business operations. So this could be like a wholesaler selling to someone like Walmart, just um, bulk products at a discounted price. Otherwise, it could be a wholesaler selling to a restaurant for their general supplies that they're going to use in their day-to-day -day operations. And this is different from retailing because the wholesalers sell it to a business and they do not ever sell directly to a consumer.